Welcome back to Jera Dynamics. Okay, so this is a political video. So if that's not your thing, you can head on out. You won't hurt my feelings. No worries. All right. Now, I've also tried to do this video a couple times, but my dogs keep interrupting. So we'll see how that goes. Um, okay, so we're going to be talking about the primaries and the general election for the president. Uh, I am a Libertarian uh, Party member. I have been, um, I'm most closely aligned with the Libertarian Party uh, politically and philosophically, and so that is who I'm usually registered to uh, at any given moment. Um, sometimes I will switch over to the Republican Party, just uh, I, I am more closely aligned to the Republican Party than the Democratic Party, and oftentimes if there's a primary uh, in California, you can only vote for the primary of the party you're registered to. And so sometimes I will switch over to vote for the uh, Democratic or for the Republican Party uh, primary uh, candidate that I like the most. Um, and so this time, uh, I you know I was watching the Republican primary very closely. And I had decided early on that I was not going to be voting for Donald Trump. I've never voted for Donald Trump, not in a primary or general election before, but also because he refused to debate in the uh, primary debates. Uh, I just could not see myself voting for someone who would do that. Uh, I see the Democratic Party candidates oftentimes refuse to debate for various reasons, and I think that is not good uh, for this country. And I didn't think that I should support Donald Trump if he decided to not debate in the uh, primary elections. So uh, initially I was um, following DeSantis, I liked him, and then I kind of switched over, not kind of, I did switch over to uh, Vivek Raswamy. Uh, I thought he was a great candidate and still think he would be a good vice presidential candidate uh, or vice presidential um, nominee if, uh, if they decide to, if Trump decides to go in that direction. Uh, I've never really cared for Nikki Haley, and since it's now come down to Donald Trump and Nikki Haley, I did not switch my party uh, preference over to Republican. And so when I vote in the primary election that's coming up here in California shortly, I can only vote for a Libertarian um, in the primary. And so there is one Libertarian candidate that is on the primary ballot. Uh, his name is Charles Ballet, B-A-L-L-A-Y. Ballet, Ballet, Bailey, not Bailey, right? That's not how you spell Bailey, right? <laughs> so whatever his name is, I don't know who he is. I've never seen anything about him online. I've never gotten a message from him. I it, It's just not someone I'm going to vote for. I have no clue what he stands for. Um... What I'm going to do is I have received messages, uh, text messages, and, and that sort of thing. The, not, not personal, like we're friends, but like, you know, the campaign type text messages. I've seen him online. I like, uh, I like him in, in a lot of aspects, so I'm going to write in Chase Oliver. He is a, an official writing candidate for the ballot, so I can write in his name. And then, you know, maybe he wins the Libertarian Party primary in California you know, for whatever that means, which really it doesn't mean a whole lot because it doesn't have a whole lot of say in how the Libertarian Party uh, nominates their candidate for the general election. And uh, the Libertarian candidate is in 99.9% uh, of times or chances, whatever, is they're not going to win the general election, right? Um, but I've never let that bother me before, in part because I'm in California. So in California... There's almost no chance that anybody other than the Democratic nominee is going to take the Electoral College votes. So it really doesn't matter. I can vote my conscience. I can vote who I think is the best candidate. And uh, and in the past two elections, that has been the Libertarian Party candidate. In 2016, uh, while he was not perfect and, and, you know, I probably, in hindsight, would vote for Trump over him. But at the time, Trump really... Uh, was not appealing to me in any on any level. Uh, I voted for Gary Johnson in 2016, and in 2020 I got to vote for uh, Jorgensen, who uh, I really thought would be a great president. She, uh, to this day, I think she would be a good president. She um, is not running this time, I don't believe, and so uh, so I won't be voting for her again. And if it comes down to Chase Oliver being on the general election ballot. Uh, then I have to make that choice at that time. But let's talk about what my thoughts are on that. 
So it's looking like we're going to get Biden and Trump again. Honestly, Democrats, anybody would be better than Biden. And you guys know it. You really do. You know that Biden is not competent enough to handle this job. And he is not going to be able... Oh, here we go. Let's see. So far, so good. He hasn't barked really loud. So I think I can leave him in this video because he's a cute dog. And who doesn't like a cute dog showing up in a video? Coming and cuddling me because, you know... He gets scared of things because he is a Vizsla, or at least he, he, you're part Vizsla, right? You're not a full-blooded Vizsla. That's that's my thoughts. Uh, but uh, yeah, he he gets scared of a lot of things. <laughs> he's he's a medium to large sized dog, and he just he's terrified. So, anyways, uh, but I will continue on with the video and just have him here until he is ready to step away and hopefully he doesn't bark <laughs> look at him get someone who loves you who looks at you the way that my dog looks at me <laughs> love you too bruce his name's bruce <laughs> yes bruce okay anyways back to the uh video at hand um so um biden he just he can't be president anymore he can't handle the job no one respects him everything is getting worse um, and if someone else is running the country for him, just let them be president. You know, if that's who's making all the decisions for him, let them be president. Um, that's how I feel about it. I think anybody would be better. Harris is a joke. She would be better. Newsom, he's my governor. He's terrible. He would be better. Uh, Michelle Obama would be way better than Biden, right? And she has no political experience other than being, um, uh, Barack's wife, right? So, like, there's, there's, you have choices, um, and um, other than him passing away, which I do not want to see happen, that's not what I'm saying, I, I don't support that, I don't, I wouldn't be happy about it, um, other than Biden passing away, any other way you could get him out of there would be great. Uh, declare him medically incompetent, impeach him, um, just pull him from the, the Democratic nomination and put up another candidate. Uh, whatever it is, get him out of there. Because if he's the nominee, and Trump is the uh, nominee uh, for the Republicans, which is almost a guarantee, unless somehow he loses these court cases, which I highly doubt, um, then it's going to be Biden and Trump. And Chase Oliver seems like a great guy. Um, I really do support the Libertarian Party. But in this case, I am going to vote for Trump. Um Trump's not going to win California, but um, the popular vote is a huge, like, um, it would be a huge win um, for, for Trump. Not that he needs it to become president, but if he can win the popular vote and he wins the electoral college vote, then, you know, we have more of a mission moving forward uh, for someone like him and you know, the calls, because you know they're going to happen. They did in 2016. Then they, like, lost their mind when anybody did it in 2020. There's going to be calls that the election was fraudulent and, you know, that he cheated or something, right? So if he wins the popular vote and the electoral, you know, the uh, electoral college vote, then, you know, there it's less, less reason to doubt, right? So I am voting for Trump if, uh, most likely, I'm, I, I won't know until the day of, but most likely I'm voting for Trump in the general election, and it'll be my first time doing so. Why is that? Because Biden is terrible. And so let's kind of talk about it a little bit. One, super old. Uh, Trump is super old too. Biden's older, and it shows. Um, Biden, he's it, it's scary watching him walk. Um, I'm really nervous for him. I don't think he's healthy. I feel bad for him. And this is not just because he's a Democrat. Uh, Mitch McConnell, you, you talked about you're probably going to retire. Do it. Get out of there. You've got to go. You are scary too. You with your seizures in the middle of talking to press conferences, you just have to go. Um, and honestly, I don't believe in age restrictions. Um, I don't think there should be an age cap. But, you know, if you can't do the job anymore, you can't do the job anymore. And even though Trump is very old, when it comes to Biden and Trump, Biden can't do the job anymore, and Trump can. 
Now, Trump's not perfect. He stutters sometimes, and he just says weird stuff more often than not. But it's not like where you think that he's really incompetent due to his mental faculties. It's just... It's just not. And the only time someone says it is is because they're a partisan hack and saying, well, see, Trump is uh, Trump is losing it too, so it's okay that Biden is freaking a vegetable and dying right in front of us. No. It's not the same thing. It's not nearly as bad. Um, I wish Trump wasn't the candidate, but when you, when you look at between Biden and Trump, you got to go with Trump. All right. So... They are accusing Trump of being a wannabe dictator. He's going to come in. He's never going to leave office. All of these crazy conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories. <laughs> Why are they conspiracy theories? Because he didn't do it the first time. <laughs> he had four years in office to, to do all of these crazy things that, sh that he's being accused of that he's going to do somehow when, the, uh, when he becomes president again. Um, in 20 uh, for the 2016 election or 2020 election um everybody thought that there was some well not everybody but a lot of people thought that there was some shady dealings going on with the election we had um people show up at the uh at the at the capitol hill and you know the left called it an insurrection. It wasn't an insurrection. Uh, there is nothing about it that was a coup or an insurrection. And if President Trump was one of the types to hold on to power at that point in time, that's when he would have done it, right? It's, no, he walked away. He didn't hold on to power. He left office and he was going to, um, honestly, I think he was going to ride off into the sunset and not run again. But then the uh, the persecutions started, right? And so when you look at what a dictator does, persecuting their political opponents, like Putin, right? Uh, when you look at that, who did that? Did Trump in his four years or did Biden in his four years? 100% Biden. Biden was persecuting his, well, not maybe not him directly, but his political opponents were being persecuted while he was president, and he did not stop it. Uh, and I, I believe that he probably had a lot to do with making sure that it was happening, um, or the person behind the scenes, whichever it was, right? <laughs> if he's, you know, has the mental faculties to do that, sometimes I'm sure in his angry, senile state, uh, he probably called for it. <laughs> But Trump didn't do that. When did Trump uh, arrest any of his political opponents? When did Trump try to uh, uh, put people on trial for disagreeing with him politically? Didn't happen. So honestly, that's what we're looking at. So let's take a look at some of the other things that, uh, that were p kind of uh, dictator-esque from Biden, right? And uh, a similar list uh, came out from uh, Glenn Beck so I do want to um, I do want to go ahead and give credit where credit is due this is not that exact list and and you know I had something similar going before I even saw that but just so people you know if anybody's watching this who happened to watch that video yes it is very it is similar to something that Glenn Beck put out a while ago all right let's take a look at it all right so Biden he has colluded with big tech on censorship, right? And this was happening before he became president. Um, not that he didn't have any power over that or any say over that because he was the vice president for the eight years leading up to uh, Trump being president. Uh, but Biden colluded with big tech on censorship. Um, Democrats colluded with big tech on censor censorship. The government in general colluded with big tech on censorship. Uh, this is a known fact. It is not a, um, it's not a conspiracy theory. This happened. Um, a big one, the biggest one, um, is the Hunter Biden story, the Hunter Biden laptop leading directly up to the 2020 election. Um, and so for me, uh, I'm not so, I'm not that I'm not concerned about election fraud, but I don't think there was enough election, direct election fraud to have caused Trump to win the election. Some people disagree with me. That's fine. Um, I don't believe that that's the case. However, 
the election was stolen and it was stolen before the election even happened this is how it was stolen uh it was stolen because the hunter biden laptop story was covered up it was thrown off of social media it was declared to be conspiracy theory ended up all of it was 100 percent true and if people had known that there's there's polls there's studies there's questions that have gone out huge percentages of people would not have voted for biden for president and he would have lost most swing states at that point, okay? Trump would have won the election if that story had not been suppressed. Keep that in mind. That's how the election was stolen. Don't let it get like confused between, you know, uh, mail-in ballots and the uh, whatever that company was running the election machines. All of that stuff needs to be looked into, but that's not what cost Trump the election. Big tech censorship is what cost Trump the election, and it was stolen. Stolen. <laughs> All right. Moving right along. Disinformation Governance Board. <laughs> so the Biden administration has tried to put together, and uh, they have since di disbanded it, but I think it's been kind of uh, reconstituted in different other uh, forms. Basically, a, a board very, very similar to um, other regimes, uh, which was a disinformation board that basically says that they get to decide what is factual and what is not factual. And if you come out with something that is not factual, then, um, then the government should be able to basically censor you, maybe even uh, persecute you politically, uh, persecute you judicially, take you to court, um, that sort of thing. All right. That's something that dictators do. All right, moving right along. The destroying of American energy, energy independence. So one of his first priorities coming into office was to uh, close down the pipeline, was to um, not add any new um, oil drilling permits, um, only to move forward with existing um, oil drilling permits, That's that sort of thing. That's bad, right? It's, it hurt us. Um, it caused us to not be able to, uh, to be as independent as we were during the Trump administration. Then on top of that, during the downturn, during all of the economic downturn and all of the issues that Biden was having with, um, with rising um, inflation, with gas prices going up, he thought it would be a great idea to go in and like basically use all of our emergency reserves, uh, not all of them, but using our emergency reserves to the lowest levels they've been in, I don't even remember how long, it was a very long time. The, uh, the oil reserves were depleted and uh, yeah, and then he kept pushing for wars, which, you know, that's the whole reason we have the oil uh, in reserve is because if there's a war and there's issues with, um, with getting oil you know transported throughout the world then we have reserves that we can count on to uh, have oil uh, to move forward with our you know operations as normally as possible uh he was using those to try to have a couple pennies taken off the price of a gallon of gasoline so he didn't look quite so bad that his gasoline prices were through the roof compared to trump's four years in office so he weakened the country uh in many different ways, but that is one of the biggest ways that he ruined this country and he weakened this country um, and I believe he did it on purpose. Vaccine mandates. Vaccine mandates were, were a huge red flag that you have yourself a dictator. Um, if you don't have the independence to say, I don't have to take some sort of vaccine that I believe is a... Um, um, not tested, not well tested, then uh, then what kind of autonomy autonomy do you have? You know, and so when the government comes in and says you should lose your job, you should not be able to go to the grocery stores, you should not be able to uh, go to the hospitals because you have chosen not to take this, uh, then yes, that's that's what dictators do. Yes, yes, it sure is. All right, moving right along, we have targeting peaceful. Protesters in general, um, there were lots of protesters that remained peaceful uh, that have still been targeted, say on January 6th, 
uh, are, say, a lot of our pro-life um, brethren who are protesting peacefully. Um, they are being targeted. They are being harassed. They are being attacked. They are being put in jail for um, protesting actually peacefully. And, you know, not everybody on January 6th was peaceful, and anybody who did anything that was violent in nature should definitely have to have some sort of consequences for that. Don't get me wrong. I don't support that. But the vast majority were actually peaceful protesters. Um, you know, as the uh, left like to say, the mostly post peaceful protests of the BLM, right? Well, the uh, mostly peaceful protesters of January 6th, some of them were still persecuted. We just saw today, a big reason why I'm doing this video um, is we just saw a media um, person arrested for reporting on January 6th. Not even for doing anything specifically, um, um, nothing violent. Um, he was just there, he was reporting. And he just got arrested today um, for reporting on January 6th, for them disagreeing with his political uh, reporting, and they put him in jail. That's what dictators do. Did Donald Trump put any of his media enemies, the people that he battled with constantly, did he put any of them in jail? No, he just called them fake news and it made fun of them and didn't call on them in press conferences. Did they get put in jail? They sure didn't. Why? Because that's what dictators do, like Biden. All right. Okay. And then the pro-life protesters, that's, that's just a shame. That's a shame. They are not doing anything wrong. Typically speaking, there are a few instances and anybody who, again, who gets violent or who tries to like legitimately block the way of people and, you know, assaults people or burns down um, clinics or, you know, even worst case scenario that the handful that have gone out and, you know, committed violent acts against the doctors. None of that I support. The vast majority of peaceful protesters, including the ones down the street from me, are just standing there praying. That's all they're doing. You may not like it, but there's nothing wrong with it. They're not doing anything wrong. Okay. Forcing sex and porn into schools. And, you know, if you spoke out against it, you were called a domestic terrorist. That's something that dictators do. They want to force their views, their worldviews, their opinions onto people um, and they use their power to do so um, and they accuse their political opponents of being terrorists. That's something that dictators do. Let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, massive land grabs, taking, um, taking land from the states, making it federal lands and forcing states to not be able to um, to not be able to take care of the lands or to make it so they can't be sold to ranchers or things like that. Massive land grabs, that's something domestic or to domestic terrorists. I mean, a little bit. <laughs> that's something dictators do. All right, what else? What else? Uh, eviction moratorium. Wow, I can see the, uh, the, the, the good natured start of it all, right? Hey, we're shutting everything down. You can't work. You can't leave your house. Uh, you can't afford your rent. Um, you can't afford your mortgage. We're going to put in a moratorium to protect you. Um, yeah, so you don't think about the other side of it. All those things that you're suffering with, so are the people that own the uh, property that you're renting. And now they don't have their rent coming in. Um, and yeah, that... That is something that dictators do, to force that on private citizens, private business owners, uh, to say that you have to allow these people to live in your property rent-free, mortgage-free, um, for, what was it? It was, didn't it, they give it, like, it, it was months or years. I can't quite 100% remember. It was, like, months or years. But anyways, this uh, uh, moratorium is something that dictators do. Government control of all things even private business and private ownership of uh, land and private ownership of property. And then the student loan cancellation. Again, I get it. I, I can see the good natured start to it all. Um, you want to help out the people who are stuck in these loans um, that just can't find their way out of it. The uh, interest rates are, are 
pretty bad. The uh, um, there you don't have a lot of rights as far as getting out of student loans. Um, you know, through like bankruptcy, that sort of thing. Um, student loans, oftentimes it's notorious and, and it's true. You know, if you pay the minimum payment on a student loan, not only will you never pay it off, but it just keeps going up because the interest is more than you're paying, which is kind of interesting. Um, uh, minimum payments should be covering interest plus uh, the, uh, um, oh, I'm going to forget the word all of a sudden, the uh, the principal. <laughs> it should be paying interest and principal of the uh, student loan, but for some reason with student loan minimum payments, it's not, you know, all of that is not good, right? I dug my way out of it. I was in a student loan that was killing me for, for a very long time. Um, and then finally I was able to get my way out of it. Um, it's not something that should be hoisted upon the rest of the taxpayers of this country uh, to have to bail people out of their student loans. They knew what they were signing up for. They did it anyways. It's not a constitutional right to for the uh, government to be able to bail out these uh, student loans. Um, in fact, the uh, Supreme Court has said that they can't do it and they just kept doing it violating a Supreme Court order. Ooh, you guys got really upset about that when uh, when Texas supposedly did that, which, which they didn't. But anyways, here. So these are some things that I see uh, that, uh, that Biden has been more of a, um, he's been more of a dictator than what Trump was during his four years. Um, Trump wasn't perfect. Uh, I'm not happy with a lot of the ways that he handled COVID towards in the last year of his um, presidency. Um, but for anybody to say that they're worried about Trump being the dictator when we saw for four years he wasn't and we have a dictator in office right now, not really, but closer to what an actual dictator is, right? Doing things that dictators do. Um, when you arrest your political opponent, opponents or allow your political opponents to be arrested, uh, when you allow media to be arrested for making um, news reports that you disagree with, uh, when you allow people to protest in front of the Supreme Court um, members' homes because you disagree with the ruling, um, all of those things, that's, that's fear, that's um, oppression, that's what dictators do. So, what am I saying? More than likely, I'm going to vote for Trump for the first time in the general election. I think a lot of people are like this, and uh, we will most likely have Trump as president for the next four years, and Biden can go off to the retirement home and hopefully have a peaceful rest of his life um, because he won't be persecuted as much as Trump was after he got out of office. Or maybe he will be because Trump is kind of a vindictive dude, you know, and, uh, you know, you do it, you get, you might get it. That's kind of how it goes. We'll see. All right, everybody. Any questions, any thoughts? You want to do some comments, uh, discuss some things in the comments. That'd be great. Um, but I got this video to finally finish and I am out of here. Take care, everybody. Have a good day.